AMC 10A 2019 problem 7. Two lines with slope half and two intersect at 2, 2. What is the area of the triangle enclosed by these two lines and the line x plus y is equal to 10? Well, first of all, we have to solve the two line equations so we can further move on with this question. So let's do that. y is equal to half x plus b because the slope is half, and another line is y is equal to 2x plus c because the slope is 2, and the x-intercepts with the two lines are obviously different, so you must use different variables. Now, they intersect at 2, 2, meaning that the point 2, 2 is a part of both functions, meaning that when x is equal to 2 for the first function, y must equal to 2, likewise for the second. So if we plug it in, 2 is equal to half times 2 plus b, so 2 is equal to 1 plus b, so b is equal to 1. So the first line equation will be y is equal to half x plus 1. Now, second of all, we do the likewise process for line 2. This will be 2 is equal to 2 times 2 plus c. 2 is equal to 4 plus c. c is equal to negative 2. So the line equation is y is equal to 2x minus 2. We're going to combine this with this equation, which we're going to write in slope-intercept form to be y is equal to negative x plus 10. Now, these three lines all intersect at various points to form a triangle. Now, given the triangle point, is there any way that we can find out the area. Well, it's a very simple trick. We just simply take half of the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix of each of the coordinate points with the third column being all ones and simplifying it out, we will get our answer. But we will get to that when we cross that bridge. So let's continue on with this question. We know that ha there's this line and this line intercept at the point 2, 2. We already have our first point down. So let's worry about the other three intersections. The other three intersections will be if I call this line A, line B, and line C, the other two lines would be lines A and C along with lines B and C. There will be the two other intersects that we need to solve for. So let's do that. Y is equal to half x plus 1 along with the C, y is equal to negative x plus 10. We call this equation 1, we call this equation 2, we can subtract equation 1 from equation 2 to get 0 is equal to 2, 3 over 2x uh, minus 9. So 3 over 2, x is equal to 9. So x is equal to 9 times 2 thirds, which is equal to 6. So the x coordinate will be 6. We can plug this into our second equation to get y is equal to 4. So the second intercept point will be 6, 4. Now what about the third point? Well, the third point will be the intersection between lines b and c. So we solve for lines b and c. y is equal to 2x minus 2. And for c, y is equal to negative x plus 10. We call this equation 1, we call this equation 2, we subtract equation 1 from the equation 2, 0 is equal to 3x, uh, so minus 12, hence x is equal to 4. And from x is equal to 4, we can plug it into the second equation to get y is equal to 6, hence our third point of intersection will be 4, 6. Now that we have the three points within our triangle, we can begin to find out its area. Its area will be simply half times the determinant of the three points, with the third column being 1. So 2, 2 being the first coordinate, 6, 4 being the second, and 4, 6 being the third. And the third column will just be 1. Now, the ordering for which you do it, 2, 2 goes in the first row, 6, 4 goes in the second row, it doesn't matter. It just so happened that I thought of this in this particular order. You could have wrote it the same thing as half, uh, 6, 4, 1, 2, 2, 1, and 4, 6, 1. It wouldn't have changed the result. So let's continue on with this question. Well, actually, uh, it actually does have to order with the matter. It's that we have to go in a certain clockwise order. If we're going to go clockwise, we must go clockwise. If we're going to go in counterclockwise, we must go counterclockwise. So if you really wanted to show yourself if your thing was correct, then just graph it out roughly. 2, 2 will be here. 6, 4 will be somewhere here. And 4, 6 will be somewhere here. So this will be 2, 2. This will be 6, 4. This will be 4, 6. So we can go counterclockwise. 2, 2 to 6, 4. 6, 4 to 4, 6. 4, 6 to 2, 2. So this ordering will check out. So the second way you could have done it is you could have started at any point and go counterclockwise or clockwise. But I'm not going to do that because I know that this is a good arrangement. So solving for a determinant is actually quite simple if you know how to do it. It's simply we multiply by this column first. So let's, it's about to get messy, so I'm going to rewrite it. It'll be half times 8, so this column plus 6 times 6 plus 1, which is 36, plus 2 times 1 plus 4, which is 8, minus 1 times 4 times 4, which is 16, minus 1 times 6 times 2, which is 12, minus 2 times 6 times 1, which is 12. So simplifying this, we get our answer. This is half times 16 plus 36, combining the two 8s, minus 16 minus 24, combining the two negative, half, negative 12s. 
Now, like terms, 60 and negative 16 cancel out, so we're just left with half times 36 minus 24. 36 minus 24 is the same thing as 12 times half will give us 6. So the solution to this question will be 6. And we see here that answer choice C has 6. So the solution to this question will be answer choice C. Now, you could have done the same thing with Heron's formula, but that would have required you finding out the three, the three side lengths and then finding its sum at perimeter, then following its formula. But this is the, definitely the most easiest way to go. And you could have done many other ways as well. And the other answers are listed on the AOPS website, so please consider checking them out. But nonetheless, this is my solution, and the solution will be six.